Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be joined here by my Chief Assistant City Attorney, Jesse Smith. Also here are Deputy City Attorneys Tom Lackritz, Yvonne Murray, Kristen Jensen, and Victoria Weatherford, uh, all who have been working diligently on the action that we filed in San Francisco Superior Court this morning. I'm also uh, happy to be joined by Supervisor Aaron Peskin and soon to be joined by uh, Supervisor Scott Weiner, uh, both of whom have been working on issues related to this defendant for uh, many years. Today, I'm announcing that I have filed suit against one of the city's largest property owners and landlords, Academy of Art University. The civil complaint I filed in San Francisco Superior Court this morning details a decade-long pattern of violations in which an array of corporate affiliates schemed to purchase and lease properties for AAU's use citywide. Again and again, AAU's use of the properties it acquired were, was unauthorized, unpermitted, or wholly prohibited by local law. Again and again, AAU thumbed its nose at planning and building code requirements, which every other San Francisco property owner is expected to follow. Again and again, AAU flouted even basic requirements involving signage, historic preservation, environmental review, and more. And most seriously of all, again and again, AAU acquired residential and commercial properties only to convert them into student dorms and facilities. In doing so, AAU unlawfully deprived San Franciscans of some 300 residential dwellings we desperately need in the midst of our affordable housing crisis, as well as critically needed office space. In fact, the scale of AAU's defiance has been breathtaking. According to a planning department memo from last month, among the 40 properties that AAU operates in San Francisco, pictured here in the map to my right, fully 33 fail to comply with permit, entitlement, or authorization requirements. Academy of Art, quite simply, is an egregious land use scoff law, and its defiance persists at the worst possible time for our residents. For as long as AAU has been breaking the law, City officials have been working to get AAU to comply with the law. And I will confess that I was sometimes less patient than some of my client departments about those efforts. But make no mistake about this, for more than a decade, our city worked cooperatively with AAU to resolve its rampant violations. We extended every professional courtesy. And no one can doubt the extraordinary good faith San Francisco showed in working with the AAU. And yet, Again and again, AAU met our good faith with bad faith. Again and again, AAU sought more time to fix existing violations even while scheming to commit new violations at newly purchased properties. Again and again, AAU set deadlines it missed, made promises it broke, and hired lawyers it soon fired, simply to frustrate progress toward resolution. With our lawsuit today, the again and agains end. By once and for all suing to end this wrongdoing, we're asking the court to adjudicate 23 AAU properties currently in violation. Another 10 properties currently reflected on the map remain under review by my office, and they may be added in an amended complaint at a later date if the problems are not remedied. Our litigation makes certain that San Francisco's rights are protected, and it more importantly seeks objectives that no environmental review process alone can accomplish. By filing suit against Academy of Art University, we seek to restore 300 residential housing units that AAU unlawfully displaced, to affirm San Franciscans' right to have a voice in shaping their neighborhoods, to reassert the integrity of fair and even-handed land use regulation and zoning, to end unfair business practices which disadvantage honest competitors who play by the rules, and to exact penalties that are both commensurate with AAU's wrongdoing and sufficient to deter similar would-be scoff laws in the future. I'll conclude with saying how thankful I am to the talented lawyers with me today. I'm grateful as well for the tireless efforts and patience of Zoning Administrator, Zoning Administrator Scott Sanchez, to the Planning Department, and to our Planning Commission. I'm also very grateful to Supervisor Aaron Peskin, whose district includes many of the San Francisco properties where the AAU is flouting the law for his leadership and hard work over the years, and to Supervisor Scott Weiner, who for years has pushed legislation to designed to limit the AAU's ability to flout 
uh, San Francisco's zoning and land use laws. And before I take any questions, I'd like Supervisor Peskin and when uh, Supervisor Weiner is able to join us to uh, say a few words. Supervisor Peskin. Thank you, City Attorney Herrera. I'm here to commend the City Attorney and his staff for finally bringing this action. Uh, we have been waiting patiently, perhaps too patiently, uh, for over a decade. Uh, this has disproportionately impacted the northeast corner of the city, uh, where hundreds of units of affordable housing have been removed during the height of this crisis. The Academy has played San Francisco for a fool, but that is coming to an end today. So let me thank uh, City Attorney Herrera and his deputy city attorneys. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Peskin. Uh, I'll let Supervisor Wiener say a few words once he gets here, but in the interim, I'm happy to take any questions or either personally or I'll refer them to my staff. What do you think took so long? It took so long for... For all of this to kind of come to a head, I know that you know there have been grumblings in City Hall about Academy of Art for a long time. Yeah. I would say it's been no secret that I've probably been a little less patient uh, than others. Um, uh, there has been, I think, a, a process of obfuscation and uh, delay uh, by the Academy of Art, um, leading people to believe that perhaps they were going to engage in, in a good faith effort to remedy the issues. And to our uh, clients' uh, credit, uh, they gave them every opportunity. They bent over backwards to give them every opportunity. And despite that, uh, the Academy of Art um, uh, did not engage in uh, good faith. And there's no secret that uh, they are um, economically, politically powerful, have a lot of resources at their disposal. And believe me, they used every one of those things to um, kick this can down the road. But I'm very happy that the planning department uh, and uh, the zoning administrator in this office are in sync with saying this has to end. And that's why you've seen the planning uh, department issue the re their most recent round of notices of violation. And I think everybody's patience has run out. Will accomplish what environmental review cannot alone. It cannot alone. Uh, you've probably heard, uh, or you may hear, from uh, the Academy of Art that we're so far, far far along in the EIR process. Why in the world would you drop this lawsuit now? The fact of the matter is that this has nothing to do with slowing down anything. The EIR process alone does not remedy their. Uh, their past wrongdoing and doesn't remedy or, or take care of any of the uh, uh, violations that are currently there. This does not slow down the EIR process at all. And the fact of the matter is, is that this EIR process has been going on for more than five years, which is virtually unheard of. And it's because of their intrans intransigence and delay. So that's what I was alluding to. The Academy is saying that they had a very generous settlement proposal on the table and that you turned it down. What, what's your response to that? Well, I'd say that that is uh, grossly overstates the facts. Uh, settlement discussions are the, the, the particulars. I can't go into because they're confidential. But um, nothing could be further from the truth that a generous offer was um, uh, uh, put forth. Uh, there were numerous settlement discussions, but it became very clear to me that they were going nowhere because uh, the uh, AAU wasn't taking this as seriously as they needed to. So I wouldn't have uh, filed this suit if I didn't think that we needed to in order to make sure that, th that these issues got dealt with and it was remedied. Before I take uh, any additional questions, which I'll be happy to do, I want Supervisor Weiner to uh, say a few words. We're very happy to have Supervisor Wiener here, and as I said earlier, he has been pushing legislation and working for years to limit uh, the AAU's ability to flout the law and to make sure that we have um, uh, even-handed enforcement when it comes to educational ed institutions and master planning. So, Supervisor Wiener. Uh, thank you, uh, Dennis. I want to thank the City Attorney's Office for uh, moving forward decisively to enforce the law, uh, and it's a pretty basic concept that uh, everyone needs to follow the law <clears throat> when we uh, pass uh, zoning uh, limitations, when we uh, pass housing measures to try to protect our scarce uh, rental housing stock. Uh, it's important that uh, th those, those laws mean something, and it means something when the Board of Supervisors passes a law that the mayor signs to say that universities need to build their own housing, and we're going to make it easier for you to do that but you can't buy up rent-controlled apartments and convert them 
to student dorms. It means something when we have uh, restrictions in our planning code uh, limiting how you can use particular properties. There's a reason why we do that, and everyone needs to follow the law. In 2012, I authored student housing legislation to do exactly that, to, make, to give incentives for universities to build student housing. We need more student housing, but we don't want student housing at the expense of our general population in terms of cannibalizing our scarce rent-controlled housing stock. And just a couple months ago, uh, we passed uh, legislation, and thank you to Supervisor Peskin for supporting it, uh, legislation to beef up our code enforcement efforts to make it easier and more efficient for our departments to enforce the law and to empower the city attorney to step in and to sue uh, when things are not moving quickly enough. So again, thank you to the city attorney's office for moving forward to make sure that everyone follows the law. Thank you, Supervisor. Thank you. I, I'll continue taking questions to the extent people have them. You seem pretty fired up. Um, I am fired up. Yeah. I mean, are you this is embarrassing. That we're sitting here when we've been fighting this for 10 years, and I am angry about it. And um, I know that these two supervisors are angry about it. And I'm angry about it because um, the vast majority of people in San Francisco know what they have to do to play by the rules. And if you had an issue at your house or your small business, you know the standard and, and, the, re and the processes that you'd have to go through at the planning department. And... Uh, here we have a, um, an entity that didn't just ignore the rules, they actively flouted them. And it's infuriating. And I think that this goes to the heart of what uh, uh, either inspires or detracts from the public's confidence in the integrity of government. And when they see a large and powerful entity flouting rules that uh, uh, the ordinary San Franciscan has to abide by, it creates a confidence in their, in, in their perception of the integrity of government. And that's something that denigrates uh, uh, all of our residents and what we do. So th I am. And why do you think they did it? Does, 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 does this come down to just a simple case of greed? It comes down to money. <laughs> I mean, this, they are the largest, one of the largest property owners in uh, San Francisco. And this is a highly lucrative business that is, uh, that is being run by this institution, and it's very profitable. Vic. Dennis, is there any evidence at all, or even an investigation, as to whether or not there was corruption at City Hall that allowed the Academy to pursue, continue violating the laws over a decade? I'm not focused on that, Vic. We're focused on uh, remedying the, uh, 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 the problem, and I can tell you that I do know that um, while I may have differed with um, the timeline that my clients over at the planning department were taking, um, I know that they were doing the best that they can and they were motivated in good faith. So um, I just look forward to working with them. Their patience has run out and they've had it because they know how much time and effort uh, they've put into it. So uh, we're just moving forward with that and I'm very confident that we're gonna be successful working together. One, one follow-up, the EIR that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, as I recall, in the last planning commission where the academy appeared, uh, was, that, was there a deadline uh, of July for the EIR? Is I, that, 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 that is, that's the timeline and the, and the path that it's on to be uh, done in July. Now, there have been other timelines that haven't been met. So uh, it may be met. It may not be met. But I think that the planning uh, department, planning commission was pretty clear about what their expectations are. Uh, so, like I said, that in and of itself doesn't remedy any of this. Uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, there's a lot of there's a whole host of buildings, probably more than a third of the one that we've identified, which in order to get uh, their use um, authorized, they're going to have to go before the board of supervisors for legislative changes. So there's a, a fair amount of work that still needs to be done. You said that they, they use their um, economic and political power to invade the regulations. It sounds like you were saying that's how they flouted the law for so long. Could you be more specific about how they use their political power? I mean, there was tremendous... Uh, the, uh, there was tremendous money and resources that has been put in. We've been through, I think, probably seven or eight law firms 
that they've been through that have made various promises, different promises, different representations uh, to uh, probably the Board of Supervisors, the Planning Department, to the Planning Commission, uh, uh, a great deal of advocacy uses that makes use of their um, economic power and use the political process. So um, that's what I think has enabled this to go on for as long as it has. So uh, I think everybody's come to the end of their rope. Okay, thank you very much.